David, thanks so much for joining me. No problem. Um, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Uh, you describe yourself as agents of the next era in health. Uh, do you mind helping me understand what you believe to be that next era? Yeah, I mean, it's a bold statement, clearly, uh, but it's something we completely believe in. Um, we've been established for a number of different years, we, well, for 25 years, which is important because it means we understand healthcare, the patients, um, healthcare professionals, and all the kind of reps. And we take that insight and all that knowledge about healthcare and marketing and patients, but we also combine it with the latest innovation. And what we're trying to do is very much shape that next era in health. So using digital, using innovation, not just for communications, but to deliver better health outcomes. You're obviously um, amongst a group of companies who have traditionally focused just on communications. So do you see this as a differentiator for yourselves or do you see this as absolutely vital to the actual direction that the industry is going in? Um, I, th I think it's first and foremost, it's something we really believe in. So, you know, when I come into work, I don't think about, oh great, I'm gonna now market a treatment, I'm gonna c try and communicate this. I take a huge amount of pride in thinking that what I am doing is helping to improve patients whether that's in oncology, whether it's in an infectious disease, I think the fact that we can leave at the end of a day and go, do you know what, today we really had an impact is a huge positive thing. Now, if that's right for the sector, fantastic. If that's right for our clients in pharmacy, it's called brilliant. If it differentiates us from our competition, also great. But it's not necessarily the motivation. It's the fact we want to do something and make a difference. So uh, what is it that actually, in your mind, creates a difference to patients when it comes to uh, the projects that you're actually working on at the moment? I think, you know, I, I've come into healthcare, I've been working in it for the last decade, and I think it's a really exciting period. Certainly when we first got, got involved in it, or when I got involved in it, um, if you talked about patient support, you were referring to a booklet, okay, which had little or no value and most likely never got read, less even kind of used. Um, so when we talk about improving patient outcomes, one of the things we talk a lot about is absolutely credible, uh, beyond the pill, around the pill support for that patient. Um, if you look at a number of different conditions, and certainly the lot that we work in, one of the biggest challenges is adherence and compliance. And what's interesting about adherence and compliance is it's very behaviour based, it's based on a routine, and sometimes people don't do it. So if we can start to take digital, if we can start to really think about that behaviour, really think about that routine, we can perhaps start to build programmes that support the patient in taking their pills. Think about what they do every day, think about those routines, and think about how can we leverage on that, how can we make the most of it and instead of producing a booklet, produce something that really, really is going to support that patient to be compliant, be successful in the treatment, and hopefully live a better kind of life. Do you think that pharma companies really understand that patient journey well enough? Uh, yeah, I do. And I think if, if they don't, who does? Um, I think they perhaps have a, um, a modesty around it. You know, I don't think they perhaps would claim that they know it perhaps as well as they do, but I really think they do. I think they invest a lot of time and effort to understand the patient. Um, I think they spend a lot of time and effort to try and understand some of their barriers. Where I think we can really support them, and I think one of the challenges is taking all that insight and taking all that research and producing something genuinely meaningfully that's going to help out those patients. And I think that's the challenge. So I think they have the insight. What they don't always have is the tools and the expertise and the innovation to make the most of it. But you still work in healthcare and you still have to produce things that comply with the regulations that we all exist with. So again, I'm going to go back to the question, what is it that specifically about you that allows you that freedom of thinking? Um, I think it's a, it's a, it's a we, we don't operate quite as closely as they do. And when you look at people like Ben Goldacre and you look at him talking about bad pharma, and you look at the history of where pharmaceutical organisations have been, and you look about some of the decisions they took a number of years ago, and some of the, some of the perhaps, the negative behaviours that they that they, conducted and did, I think they're coming at this with a much more baggage. So as a result of that baggage, as a result of some of the negative, um, bad pharma Bengal Lake atmosphere, it does make it more difficult. Um, and I think that's what's perverse about what Bengal Lake does is he does it because he believes it's in the interest of the patients. The reality of the situation is he hamstrings the organisations he's talking about to actually drive forward and, uh, and create better outcomes for those very patients, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Um, but, you know, I want to play devil's advocate. Pharmaceutical companies have a commercial objective and patients do not. So is that true alignment ever really possible? Yeah, I mean, of course. If, if you don't have innovation, sorry, if you don't have, if you don't have profit, 
you're never going to have an innovation. So I think we have to recognise that pharmaceutical companies are absolutely allowed to kind of generate profit uh, and make money completely appropriate, because if they don't do that, they won't also be able to invest in making those treatments. I would absolutely argue it is possible to keep your shareholders happy whilst at the same point keeping healthcare professional stakeholders happy. And for me, that's the kind of future. It's about developing, um, call it these services, developing these services that are both morally appropriate for the patients, but also commercially beneficial to the organisation. And I think the companies that succeed are those that are in the middle, developing things that that benefit all pies.